Good evening and welcome to a very quick tutorial on photo retouching. Now we may not have to do this a lot in terms of web design, but certainly there are times where we need to touch up or change a photo. Keep in mind that as you're grabbing images off the internet, the copyright does make a difference as to whether or not you're allowed to make choices of retouching, combining, or changing this photo. All of that has to do with the Creative Commons license that we uh, read about last week. This particular image is a sample that I've linked to, and this is a decent sample to pick to try to do a retouch. Now, before I get going on the retouch, I want to comment. You may certainly use this particular image if you would like, but you may certainly go out and get any image that you want to use as a retouch. I would caution you, though, to choose an image for this exercise that's going to be relatively easy to do. For example, I'm looking here, there are some scratches on the original photo right here and here and a couple of other places. There's some aberrations on the lens or on the photographic processing up there. Those would be fairly easy to touch up, whereas if you choose a photo that has a lot of these scratches and uh, aberrations, you might spend a long time doing this exercise. So I'd like you to choose a photo that you can completely restore within a reasonable amount of time. So I've linked to this one on our website and I've also linked to um, some of these really really old photos from the Smithsonian. Those are always good to do some retouching, although many of these I have found look as if they've already been retouched. So you have to kind of hunt around if that's one of the ones you want to use. But certainly take a look on Creative Commons under Flickr or search Google for Creative Commons, look for older imagery. You may even have images in your own library and you don't necessarily have to choose an old image. For example, in our sample today I'm going to choose a brand new image, an image of a house. Now this is a situation where many times in communities that have been built up over the years you'll see these electric lines here running through houses. And I'm not quite sure that I think I think that that doesn't look very appealing. Now there's nothing I can do about it obviously. And most communities have these electric lines running around. But if we were to imagine that we wanted to get this house ready for sale and we wanted to put it forth in its best light, I might want to retouch this photo so as to get rid of the electric lines going throughout. Now I've already loaded the photo here in Photoshop and there's a couple of different tools that I could use to work this out. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, closer so I can get uh, to take a look at it. On my keyboard I can do a control plus or on a Mac I can do an option plus or alternately I could go up to the menu, <clears throat> excuse me, and just do a um, <clears throat> series on the, the menu here. Now in terms of this, for our sample, I'm going to just show you how to get rid of, um, let's say, these uh, lines coming in here. Now there are three or four tools that work great magic in Photoshop, but the two that would be most likely to be used here would be the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tool. And I really don't have a preference for you. It depends a lot on what the problem is. The difference between them is that the cloning stamp will take a direct copy of something, whereas the healing brush will take a copy and also do some extrapolation. So let me just show you a little bit about that. They both work in similar ways. I'm going to click on the cloning stamp tool here, and I can come up here and I can choose the pixel width of my brush, as well as the type of brush, whether or not I want to, you know, round circle, a soft fuzzy circle, what size, what dimension, etc. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick with a 13 pixel brush and close that out. Now on any type of cloning exercise in order to invoke the clone the idea is to pick a sample of what you want to copy from. In order to do that on a Windows computer you're going to press Alt on your keyboard and click on a sample. And what that does is that picks up a little sample from over here on the Macintosh. It's option click to do that. So now once again if I press Alt I get this special little cursor and I'm basically saying 
this looks this area right here looks really good for me to copy into this area over here so I'm taking a sample from here let go and now if you see you can see the little crosshair is sitting over there to the left now I have to be kind of careful to do this because once that crosshair comes over into the area where I'm cloning to for example here if I were as I get closer to the um, lines notice that the crosshair hair goes over the lines and just basically duplicates the lines I don't want to do that right so I'm going to actually choose a little bit further out and do this now I like to actually do this in very short bursts that way if I don't like it I can do an edit undo and not have to step back too far so that I could <clears throat> take um, babier steps and not have to undo nearly as much. Now, that's one sample of a clone. Obviously, I would go ahead and cl uh, clean this portion up over here as well. Now, before I move forward, though, I want to show you how to use the healing brush tool. Keep in mind that this cloning stamp tool, all it did was it took a sample from roughly about out here and copied it to over here. The challenge with that, of course, is that it did nothing but a straight copy-paste, if you will, and it didn't really do any kind of um, matching or extrapolations of, of what's there. The Healing Brush tool is actually a bit better at this kind of thing because it will actually figure out how to blend the pixels a little bit better. But similar technique, I'm going to press my Alt key on my Windows, take a sample, and of course on the Mac that's an option click, and now I'm going to just start to go down it a bit more. Now unfortunately, I'm not real happy with exactly that. So what I would probably want to do, although you know that really looks like a cloud, so at the end of the day it doesn't it doesn't bother me that much. But I'd probably want to pick up, first of all, a smaller brush. And then I'd probably want to pick up more of the blue sky here and as you notice this time out when I do that notice that it's not a direct copy replace but rather it'll pop in there and then it'll kind of smuts it around so it looks a little bit cleaner so that would be let me zoom out on that that would be a way in which we could get rid of in this particular case those lines now if you pick up an older photo and you wanted to uh, do that with <clears throat> the same kind of technique I'm going to zoom in on this here unfortunately this is a relatively low resolution photo so you really aren't going to see much but very similar idea here I would use my um, alt tool here to pick up a sample and then I could basically get rid of any kind of smaller problems within the photo. So that's it for your first exercise. I want you to find a photo, any photo you choose, and take something out of it, clean something up inside of it, then insert the original as well as the cleaned up photo on your web page as a template, and upload them. And I'll see you in a moment. Bye.